YouTube. Today we have three different charges which have been distributed in this sort of triangular pattern. And in this problem, we're gonna solve for the total or the net electric force which is acting on this charge as a result of the other two charges. Now, anytime we're trying to solve for electric force, we need to use Coulomb's law. The catch is because these charges are distributed in a triangle, there's gonna be several different steps that we need to go through in solving for the net force on this charge. See, first we're gonna to need to use geometry to find the distance between these charges, as well as the direction which the forces are gonna be acting on this charge. Then we're gonna use Coulomb's law to find the force on this charge by each of these other charges. And last, we're gonna use vector addition to find the net force on this charge as both its magnitude and direction. See, this entire problem is dependent on Coulomb's law. Now, Coulomb's law tells us that the electric force between any two charges is a function of the distance between those two charges. So the first thing we're gonna do is work out the distance from one charge to the next. Now realize the distance from charge to charge here is simply the hypotenuse of this right triangle which has been drawn out here. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we can solve for this length of the hypotenuse. And we find these two charges are 1.12 meters apart. Next, we need to work out the angle between this hypotenuse and this horizontal axis here. Now, this angle isn't a part of Coulomb's law, but the reason we need this angle is gonna become apparent a little bit later on. Now, this angle can be solved simply by looking at the inverse tangent of the rise and run of this triangle. and we find that angle is 26.6 degrees. So having worked out the geometry of this triangle, we can now turn to Coulomb's law to find the actual force. And realize, because this dimension is the same as this dimension, the distance between these two charges is gonna be the same as the distance between these two charges. So now that we've worked out all the geometry of this triangle, we can move on to actually applying Coulomb's law to this problem. So next, by applying Coulomb's law, we can find the force by this charge on this charge. Now the fact of the matter is there's two charges here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the force on this. So there's two charges over here both of which are acting on this charge right here. So we're gonna look at the force by each charge individually using Coulomb's law. So first, looking at this charge, the force by the 10 microcoulomb charges given by K, that's nine times 10 to the ninth, multiplied by our 10 microcoulombs, that's 10 times 10 to the negative sixth, multiplied by this charge, that's 30 times 10 to the negative sixth. And we found the distance between these two charges is 1.12 meters. And this leaves us with an electric force of 2.15 Newtons. Next, we're gonna apply Coulomb's law to find the force by this charge on our 30 microcoulomb charge. So again, we have Coulomb's constant, this time times 20 times 10 to the negative six coulombs, multiplied by our 30 microcoulomb charge. And again, the distance between these two charges is 1.12 meters. And this works out to be 4.30 newtons. 
All right, now that we've found these two individual forces, to come up with the total or the net force on this charge, we don't simply add these together. Realize these two forces are vectors. And so we need to go through the process of vector addition to find the net force on this charge. Now remember, to add vectors in two dimensions, we need to break those vectors up into their horizontal and vertical components. And it's in solving for the components of these vectors that we'll find this 26.6 degrees comes into play. See, starting with this force, which was produced by this charge over here, we know this force is 2.15 newtons, and that force has both an x component and a y component. Now to solve for the horizontal component, we're simply going to multiply the hypotenuse, that's 2.15, multiplied by the cosine of this angle. And realize, this angle right here is the same as this 26.6 degree angle over here. Which means this force has a horizontal component of 1.92 newtons. Now vertically, we're gonna have 2.15, that's the hypotenuse, multiplied by the sine of this angle. And that's 0.96 newtons. And realize it's downward, so we're gonna say this force has a vertical component that is negative. Now we're gonna break up this 4.30 newton force in a similar fashion. These 4.30 newtons have both a horizontal and vertical component. And again, this angle right here is the same as this angle. So horizontally, we're gonna have 4.30 cosine 26.6, which is equal to 3.84 newtons. And vertically, we're gonna have 4.30 sine 26.6, which is 1.92 newtons. So now that we've broken these two vectors up into their horizontal and vertical components, we can set about actually adding these vectors together. Remember, the net force, or the sum of all forces horizontally, is simply going to be the sum of all the individual forces, or at least their components, within the x-axis. So the horizontal component of this force we found was 1.92, plus the horizontal component of this force, which we found was 3.84. That gives us a total force in the x-axis that is equal to 5.76 newtons. Performing a similar function in the y-axis, the vertical component of this force was 0.96. Remember that was down, so it's negative, plus the 1.92 newtons, which leaves us with a total vertical force of 0.96 newtons. And that's gonna be up. So now that we know the two components of this resultant force, we can go about solving for the total magnitude and direction of the resultant force on this charge. See, combining these using the Pythagorean theorem, we can get the magnitude of the resultant force. And we find the total force is 5.83 newtons. Then using the inverse tangent function, we can solve for the direction of this force. And we find this and we find the resultant force is acting 9.46 degrees above the horizontal axis. So all this is how you solve for the net force acting on some charge as a result of two other charges. I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.